Okay, here we're, we're going to be looking at the path of air in the body. Now, this shows a nice overview of the nose, the larynx, the trachea, the right lung and left lung. We're going to look at this in a little bit more detail and be able to identify some of these portions on how air moves through our body. So the first part, the res respiratory system zones. First one is the conducting zone. This provides rigid conduits for air to reach sites of gas exchange. So what we're looking at is to be the nose, the nasal cavity, the pharynx, and the trachea. It's up in this region. These rigid zones stay open all the time, and they're what's allowing air to both enter and also exit. In addition to the conducting zone, we have the respiratory zone. This is the actual site of gas exchange. This occurs in the bronchioles, um, the alveoli, uh, ducts, and the areas down kind of within the lung that we typically think of as where gas exchange is specifically occurring. Lastly, we have our respiratory muscles, such as the diaphragm, which is located down here, and other muscles that help promote ventilation. So our zones are the areas where we're having that actual either gas exchange or areas of gases to move through, and the respiratory muscles are what's helping move that air both in and out our respiratory zones. Continuing on, looking a little bit more specifically at the path of air, air normally enters through the nostrils, passes to the larynx, which is here, which is our voice box, and then to the trachea. And then it goes to the bronchioles of the lungs. The tracheal tube is formed by a stack of C-shaped pieces of hyaline cartilage. What that means is they're not solid rings, but they're actually C-shaped. So you have a bunch of these C-shaped rings kind of all piled on one top of one another, allowing some areas of kind of compression here. So you can think of it kind of like being able to move. But that C-shape is able to hold it open to allow air to exchange. Continuing on, the lungs hang free in the th thoracic cavity. An air tube is called bronchus, connects each lung to the trachea. Continuing on, the lungs contain millions of these al alveoli. Many, many, many of these, because this is the actual site of gas exchange between the air and our blood. The thoracic cavity is bound to the bottom of a thick layer of muscle called the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is located down here, and that will move and help us be able to allow air to come into the lungs and also exit. These al alveoli are tiny sacs in the lungs. So we can see them here, allowing CO2 and oxygen to be exchanged. This allows for rapid gas exchange due to the extremely high surface area to volume ratio that they have. They're also, and this, I think this image does a great job of showing this, surrounded by a network of capillaries. So we want these uh, blood vessels to be very thin. This allows the red blood cells to travel one by one, allowing for the maximum rate of gas exchange. We want our CO2 to diffuse out. We want our oxygen to diffuse in, and that's what we see going on both here and also here. And that kind of intense network uh, is very evident in both of these images. Give you that overview of the respiration here. We can look in those tiny airways. Again, we're branching from a large area to a smaller to a smaller to these tiny little air uh, pockets. And we have our alveoli here, which is our tense network of capillaries. And this is what's allowing for the actual gas exchange to occur. This is what's helping our cells diffuse out the carbon dioxide and diffuse in the oxygen. As a reminder, keep in mind that none of this is occurring by active transport. It's all simply by diffusion. By simply having a greater concentration of oxygen here and a lower concentration of oxygen in the blood in this case, oxygen will naturally diffuse in and carbon dioxide as a result will diffuse out. This is that general overview of the respiratory system related to our gas exchange.